Hi, I'm Jamie Jackson, a spokesperson for the Master Seminary. And joining me right now is Dr. Nathan Buznitz. And we're going to talk about blood moons. It's been all over the news. It's coming up this Sunday night. We're hearing everything from this is the end of the world to God's trying to send us a message. Uh, what, what's going on? Where's the truth in all of this? An interesting question. Blood moons are actually a fairly common occurrence. They occur anytime you have a total lunar eclipse when the earth comes between the sun and the moon, causes the moon to have a little bit of a reddish hue, and that's what scientists call a blood moon or a blood red moon. And when you have a blood moon, when you have four blood moons that occur in close proximity to one another, it's called a tetrad. There have actually been 55 tetrads in the last 2,000 years. So this is something that is fairly common. What's less common is when these tetrads correspond with major Jewish feasts. There's only been 10 times in the last 2,000 years that we have these tetrads corresponding to Jewish feasts. And since the year 1492, there's only been three times that this has happened where these tetrads have corresponded to Jewish feasts. One was in 1493 and 94, one was in 1949 and 50, and then in 1967 and 68. And there have been some who have looked back at those three dates and they've identified major historic things that have happened to the nation of Israel around those times. And so they speculate that these tetrads somehow signal major occurrences regarding the nation of Israel. And we're in the midst of one of those tetrads right now, 2014, 2015. The tetrad will end on September 27, 28, 2015. So the question is, does this signal something major that's going to happen to the nation of Israel? And I guess that's the question I have for you. I mean, you know, there are some pastors who are on television and in the newspaper saying, you know, this is important. Uh, God's sending an important message to America about Israel. Uh, we're hearing a lot of different things about what this upcoming blood moon means. Uh, how should we as believers and how should we from a biblical perspective look at something like this? Yeah, and that really is the question that Christians need to ask. And when these kinds of things come up, these sort of date setting speculations, Christians need to be careful to exercise discernment, to go to the Word of God, and not just to jump on some sort of bandwagon of hysteria. There's a couple of concerns that I would have about the date setting that's going on right now with regard to the blood moon. One would be the fact that a lot of the speculation is being fueled more by astronomical, really astrological data rather than biblical data. We do see in Joel 2, in Acts 2, and in Revelation 6 that in the end times the moon will be turned to blood reference to the fact that the moon will appear as, uh, as a blood color. But that's something that is unique and dramatic, not something that occurs every time we have a lunar eclipse. And that's why earlier I mentioned just how often these things happen. So there's nothing really that unique about what's going to happen on Sunday night into Monday morning. And so we want to make sure that we're looking to the Word of God to drive the way we think about the future and not coming up with fanciful speculations based on astrological data. When we look at Joel 2, when we look at Acts 2, when we look at Revelation 6, we see that there are some other major cosmic events that are going to take place. The sun is going to be darkened. There's going to be other major signs in the heavens, things that go far beyond just a total lunar eclipse. The other major concern I would have with it is that some have even said that this is going to mark either the rapture or the beginning of the Great Tribulation. I think we have to be really careful with date setting when it comes to those kinds of things. In Matthew 24, 36, Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour. And even in Acts 1, 7, when the disciples asked him, is now the time that you're gonna bring in the kingdom? Jesus said, it's not for you to know the times and the epochs that the Father has established. So I think when uh, you have those who are setting specific dates, they're really going beyond what Scripture allows Christians to do. It's not for us to know the specific dates. Instead, when the New Testament talks about end times, when it talks about the end of the world in places like 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 15, it encourages believers not to try and figure out the date, 
but rather to live in holiness and to live in hope as we anticipate the fact that one day our Lord will return, He will establish His kingdom, and this world system will come to an end. And that's, that's a more proper, more biblical look at how Christians to think about the future. And when we think that way, we really can join with the apostles in saying, you know, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. So our focus should be more on ourselves, our hearts, and, and making sure that we honor the command to be holy. Absolutely. To walk in holiness, to walk in hope, and to recognize that the Lord is sovereign over history. When He has determined the right time for this world system to end, when He has determined the right time for His return, that's when those events will take place. And it, it won't correspond to some sort of silly, fanciful, astrological calendar that will correspond to his perfect and eternal purposes. And we should be looking to God's word for truth, not some book that someone's trying to sell. There is a lot of money to be made by whipping up hysteria and fears in people's hearts, but that's just not a biblically responsible way of handling the information that scripture reveals to us about the end times. Yes, we are to be on the alert, we are to be ready, absolutely. But we need to be careful not to draw fanciful speculations in the white spaces when Matthew 24, 36, Acts 1, 7, and other passages make it very clear that that's not something that God intends for Christians to know. Dr. Busnitz, thank you, appreciate it. Hey, my pleasure.